about the minimum required sample size. Um, so everything that we've kind of done in this course, we go out, we take a sample, we might build a confidence interval, we might do hypothesis tests, we might find a probability, um, but we don't ever talk about what goes in to actually determining how many people we have to talk to, and that's what this is. So sampling is expensive. It costs us a lot of money, and so we don't want to talk to any more people than we have to, um, not just because we might be antisocial, but just from an economic standpoint here. And so what we've done is they've actually taken the um, confidence interval formula. So a confidence interval, a generic confidence interval formula might be something like x bar plus or minus z times sigma over square root of n. And if we know what the acceptable error is, how much we can be off by? Well, we can rearrange and we can solve for n. And that's all that's really happening in these sample size problems. It's the confidence interval formula that's been rearranged to solve for n now that we know about the error, that amount that we want to be within or that we can be off by. So when it comes to calculating these, it's really just about making use of these two different formulas that we have. So we've got one when we're estimating the mean or average. It's the one that's got standard deviation in it. And we've got one when we're talking about population proportion. It's the one that's got P in it. In both of these formulas, we have E, error, which is the acceptable level of error um, in the estimate and it's going to be in the same units of the mean if we're measuring it in grams. It's also going to be in grams type of thing. If we're doing a proportion problem, the error is also going to be a percentage. Everything's kind of in the same units there. Sigma, standard deviation, um, again, also going to be in the same units as the mean. Sometimes, though, they try to trick us, not trick us, but um, we just want to make sure that we know the rule that the standard deviation is equal to the range divided by 4. So sometimes they give us that range instead of the actual um, standard deviation, and we just have to remember from way back in the beginning of our course that if we divide the range by 4, we get a stand-in for standard deviation. When we're doing our sample sizing um, with population proportion, we can see that there's this P here. P is that proportion believed to be true. This can get complicated sometimes where if they want a conservative estimate or they say that they don't know what P is, we're just using P of 50%. This will actually give you the largest possible sample size, the largest minimum sample size um, that you could need to basically do what you have to do there. We've got a Q in this formula and we'll just remind ourselves that Q is just one minus P. If we think of P is the probability of success, Q is that probability of failure. And then the only thing that we haven't talked about in these formulas is our Z of alpha divided by two. So this is the same Z, it's the same as when we do a confidence interval, which is why we are using our norm dot S dot inverse of alpha over two, right? We just want to figure out that Z value that's going to, that was a really bad normal curve there, sorry. Um, oh, that one's not much better. Uh, but we want to find the Z value, one side's going to be negative, one side's going to be positive, of that alpha over two in the tails, same type that we use with the confidence interval. So let's take a look at these examples here. The first one, it says, in the past, summer students have worked for your firm, earned an average of 6,500, although it ranged from 6,000 to 7,000. How large of a sample would I need if I'd like to estimate the average salary with 50, uh, within $50 of the true value with a 99 percent confidence. And so we want to recognize here is standard deviation. They didn't give us a standard deviation. Instead, they gave us a range. So we're going to use that range divided by four to get us to our answer there. So our range is from 7,000 to 6,000. So we've got a range of 1,000 there. And if we divide that by four, it tells us that our standard deviation is going to be 250. Our error, well, we want to be $50 within that true value. So we've got an error of 50. And we want to find our Z value. So our Z of alpha divided by 2. If it's a 99% level of confidence, we just want to recognize that alpha then is 1%. So when I go to find the Z value, it's going to be a norm dot S dot inverse of half of that alpha. And so 0.5. 
percent. Um, and you can put that in with a percent sign or you can convert it to 0.005. You'll get the same answer there. And so this gives us our Z value of negative 2.575. And so because we're talking about something that we can measure here, right, when we have a standard deviation, we have a range, we know it's going to be our first formula, where n is equal to that z value times our standard deviation over the air, and then that whole thing is squared. Funny enough, I think the biggest mistake I see people uh, doing when they send me these problems, like, oh, I just can't get it, is that they forgot to square the answer. They did the calculation and they just forgot to square it. So don't forget about that. So our Z value there, that 2.575, our standard deviation, 250, and our uh, air, 50. And we're going to square this whole thing. And what we get here is N being 165.8. Eight. Now we have to recognize that this is a minimum requirement. It's the minimum requirement to meet our level of 99% confidence. But the issue with this is that we can't sample 165.8 people, right? We can't go talk to 0.8 of a person, which means when it comes to doing uh, sample sizing, you're always going to round up, okay? always going to round up. And so in this case, the, our sample size is going to be 166 in order to satisfy our requirements there. So the next one here says that your widget factory has historically had a defect rate of 5%. You've just replaced several key pieces of equipment and would like to estimate the defect rate within 1% of the true percentage with 95% confidence. How many parts should you inspect? So Anytime they're asking us about like how many people, how many things, how many, how large of a sample, right? We're talking about these sample sizing. In this situation though, it's told us that we have a historical defect rate of 5%. So it's telling us that our P is 5%, meaning that the Q is going to be 95%. And we'd like to estimate the defect rate within 1% of the true percentage. So our error there is going to be 1%. Now, the thing about our percentages when we do these types of calculations is they do all need to be decimals. So just so we don't make any mistakes, I'm going to put those in as decimals. And we need to know our Z value as well. So because this is a alpha of 5%, when I go norm dot s dot inverse, I'm going to split and I'm going to put two and a half percent in there and I'm going to get back my value of negative 1.96. It's going to let me populate my formula. So my sample size in this situation, right, n is p times q and then in our brackets we have z divided by that air squared. Um, you might also see this formula done as z times square root of p1 minus p all over the air squared. Um, lots of times people will kind of work with it in the same in the second format just because this term here is just the um, proportion standard deviation. So it makes it very similar to the formula you just used in the first question. But mathematically, it's the exact same as the, the formula that you have on your formula sheet. Um, and so it makes it just a tad easier for our calculators. It doesn't really matter which one you use, though, you're going to get the same answer. So we're going to have that 0 0.05 for P, 0 0.95 for Q, just one minus P there, right? Our Z was the 1.96 and our air 0 0.01. And I'm going to square that and I'm going to get for my N 1824.76. It would not matter what came after that decimal, even if it, instead of point, being 0 0.76, it was 0.16. We're always going to round up. Okay. The last question here says that a study will be conducted to estimate the population proportion. A level of confidence of 99% will be used and an error of no more than 0.4 is desired. What is the maximum size of, uh, of the sample? What is the maximum size of the sample should be? That's a terrible sentence. Oh my, 
but you know what I was trying to say there. So anytime it talks about us finding the maximum sample size or it's saying conservative estimate or P is unknown, all this is trying to tell us is to use a P of 50%, okay? So it's given us here that the air is no more than 4%. Um, our alpha is going to be 1%, so we're going to use that Z of alpha over 2, our norm dot S dot inverse of a half percent, same as what we actually did above to give us a negative 2.575 there. And so um, when we're looking at this, uh, all we have to do now is really fill in our formula, right? Same formula as what we used in the question before. N is equal to P, Q, Z over that air squared. Um, if our P is 50%, this means our Q is also 50%. Our Z is 2.575. And our air there. 0 0.04 and we're just going to square that and it's going to give us an answer of 1036.03 and so again this isn't about rounding it's about always rounding up what we've been given here this is a minimum this is the minimum in order to meet our requirements and so therefore we're going to go to 1037. And so the fact that it said maximum sample size, they're just referring to us being conservative because the conservative estimate is us being like, okay, well, what's the most people that we'd have to look at in order to satisfy these requirements? Hence, we can infer it as also being the maximum size, but we're still technically solving for a minimum. It just happens to be the biggest minimum in the situation.